I'm Vivian. Hey, I'm Sharon Finchak. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Bernard, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Bonjour. Bonjour. I like your accent. Uh, yes, I did not lose it yet. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Biltmore Winery. Thank you, thank you. So this is where all of the juice will come and grapes will come at harvest time. What are some of the varieties? In our vineyard at Biltmore, uh, we grow Chardonnay, a Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Cabernet Franc. Uh, but we buy grapes from California, Washington, Oregon, uh, the varietals that don't grow very well here. We have over 45 different wines, so we oh, have wow. a whole range, a little bit for everyone. But I'm not going to get to stomp on any grapes or anything? Uh, we don't stomp on <laughs> grapes, not yet, but it will come. Okay, well, we're just going to walk down to the tank. We call it the tank room. Okay. And it smells so good in here. So what is, what are we getting ready to do here? Pump over on a petit verre d'eau. You want to start the process? I guess. So, so you just take this valve and you just open it. Okay. Pull it out. Oh. See. <laughs> so you can see the pretty color that's yeah, developed. Yeah, beautiful. And then you smell it to make sure it smells appropriately. A lot I of the CO2. Alcohol, yeah. yeah, yeah. How did you get into winemaking? Um, well, I wanted to be in winemaking when I was really young, about nine years old, which really? was crazy. My only exposure to wine when I was nine was at Christmas, people in the community would give my dad jars of like wine that they had yeah. made in there. And there was like strawberry wine and muscadine wine and um, I didn't know that people did that for a living. Right. Oh, I didn't either. I never thought that it would actually, I thought I would do it as a hobby. Right. You know, so it's, it's great to be uh, doing what you love as your job. Yeah. So. This is our barrel room. We have French and American barrels and the inside of the barrels are charred, uh, which gives uh, different types of flavors to the wine. The best barrels are French. <laughs> what we don't want is the test of wood to overwhelm the test of the grapes. I, I can tell that we're going to taste something. I would think that we should. We should. Tastes good to me. <laughs> so, what do you taste in the Malbec? No, you don't. I don't want to be put on the spot like that. Uh, I taste wine. <laughs> it does. You're absolutely correct. <laughs> Definitely wine. It's a lot of. To me, it's um, Malbec will typically have a lot of berry um, mm -hmm. flavor, some blackberry to it. Um, Bernard, what about you? Me, licorice. Licorice. Yes. Well, and each person is different, and it's all about your history and background. A wine might taste very different on a date versus with your girlfriends or with your husband or wife. Well, yeah, sometimes maybe. I'll taste a wine out on a date and bring the bottle in the next day and taste it with Bernard because I loved it. And it doesn't taste the same. Because Bernard is not your date. <laughs> <laughs> He's my boss. Right, exactly. I work with my husband, and, you know, whenever I'm working on a dish, he needs to... He, he needs to taste things before they go on the menu, but I always gauge his mood because if he's in a bad mood, then <laughs> he's not gonna like what I've made. Right. Um, I've also That's let him- That's not possible. <laughs> it is. This is what my husband does when he tastes food. When he tastes wine or food, it's like this, and it drives me insane. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay, Let's see what happens when I have a little bit of wine. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Yes. I know that it is harvest season and no I am um, in the way of that. So I appreciate your time. It's nice, nice meeting you. Nice meeting you and nice meeting you very nice much. Meeting you. Thank you.